Hello, Balance Beamers. Welcome back to another episode of The Balance Beam. We are tremendously excited to have you a part of this. FYI, my husband told me to stop using the word excited because he's over my lack of adjectives. So I'm going to throw a whole bunch of new ones at you this episode. (laughs) And I have the perfect person to do it with. We are thrilled to welcome Miss Allison Tibbs. Let me first lay out the caveat that Allison Tibbs is not only extraordinary at everything that she touches, and I'll tell you about her in a moment, but she is an excellent friend, a really valuable, raw, challenging you to greatness friend. So you'll be, I just want to say excited again, let me not say that again, you will be uh, jubilated to know (laughs) her by the end of this podcast. So sequentially, let me lay it out for you. Allison Tibbs is an international speaker. She is an author. She is an entrepreneur. She is a well-established beach body coach, a social media guru, and a marketing expert. I didn't even get into the fact that she is fully energetic, enthusiastic, classic, and intelligent. How is that for adjectives for you? Allison, welcome to The Balance Beam. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm just I wasn't using the word excited, so I'll say I'm thrilled <laughs> to to be here and to you know just to collaborate with you on you know something that you know I think is just genius in terms of balance beam. I think it just you know this is something that's not really talked about. You know these these topics, these themes. You know we you know so I'm just I'm so thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I know oh. beans in our head now, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I am so um, overwhelmed by your presence in such a good way. Like literally, for those of you who don't know, just to give out those whole big credibility points, because Allison is very modest, although she definitely does not hide the fact that she has worked really hard to become what she is and to do what she's doing going forward. But she owns uh, several companies, one of them being Allison Tibbs International, uh, Marquis LLC, which is her marketing firm, Empower a Girl Foundation, which is an awesome nonprofit that helps girls 8 to 18 years old. She has a ton of joint ventures, including, um, what is it, Passion Pair Divas, I think was one of the ones you had um, yeah. or still have um, for your PR and marketing firm. Um, she's also co-founder with myself, Andrea Williams, and Atia Blair for Woven, Women of Vision Empowerment Network. Um, she has Sheepreneur Business Boot Camp. I mean, the girl is branded in every area that is relevant to what she does as a guru and an expert. And I truly don't give out those terms loosely, but they definitely apply to her on multiple levels. And did I mention she's co-authored like a dozen books? I think I forgot to say that, but <laughs> nonetheless, she is a everyday, awesome, multi-level entrepreneur. Um, I don't like to say serial entrepreneur because she's not all over the place and just kind of buying things and selling them and repurposing. She's really focused on making sure she helps people live a life of passion, power, and purpose. And that's her phrase that I stole from her because she speaks about it and teaches on it all the time. Um, so, Allison, I have a first question to get us kind of flowing. You know, we're going to be very conversational in this interview because that's what our folks want. Um, I just want to know what made you step out and decide to leave corporate, a very high-tier corporate position, and fall into the throes of entrepreneurship? Uh, you know, I think the, the most important thing for me that really pushed me forward was just feeling or feeling that I was – I just wasn't living – and my true potential, my true calling, um, you know, I just felt like, I felt there was more that I could do. I felt like there was more that I could be. I felt that there were more people that I could help. Um, you know, I believed that, you know, I just believed that, that there was more out there. And I wanted to, to give that, and I wanted to do that, and I wanted to be that. And the, once I made up in my mind that I wanted to change and wanted something different, I just realized that I couldn't do it in my corporate position. You know, I had to do it on my own where I had more freedom and flexibility to be able to travel and to speak and to write and to coach and, you know, just to really put myself out there. And, you know, once you make up in your mind that you want to do your own thing, every day that you're sitting in your your current job or your current position, it's like, you know, it's like torture because you're Mm -hmm. just so ready to get out of there. You're so ready to move forward. 
you know, and that's really what, you know, happened for me. So, you know, once, once that happened, it was just like, you know, keep pushing and keep moving. And, uh, you know, I'm really, you know, really excited, you know, about how everything has, has happened. And, and this is just the beginning, you know, it's been three and a half years and I'm amazed at what all has been accomplished, but it's nothing compared to what lies before me. So that's the real cool thing about entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I wish you could like see me bobbing my head like a a bobblehead, literally. <laughs> you you're you're dead on. Like this is nothing. You've done a lot of the trench work. You've definitely made some great moves. But I already know just from knowing you on a personal and professional level that this is nowhere near the beginning of great for you. Um, you're you're literally kind of this country's best kept secret. And I say this country because you're very global, and people don't understand how global you are. You're well-traveled personally and professionally. You speak all over the country. Yeah, and I love it. You know, I, I absolutely love it. You know, that's another thing about being an entrepreneur is you have that flexibility and freedom to do it. And, you know, it, it's, it's just a testament of, you know, not, not putting yourself in a situation where you have to think small. You know, when you become an entrepreneur, yeah, you have to be focused. Yes, you have to be um, – you know, targeted and, and make sure that you're not all over the place, you know, in your business, but really stepping out there and saying, okay, who, I wake up every day thinking, who can I help? How many people can I help today? Who can I reach out to? Who can I, you know, connect with, collaborate with? And granted, yes, you know, I live in Philadelphia and it's, you know, it's a great city. I've, I've been here for two years, but, you know, I have to always think about, you know, where, where else can I be? Where else can I go? So, um, you know, that's the cool thing about being an entrepreneur working for yourself. You know, as long as I have a, you know, Wi-Fi connection and, a, you know, my computer and my, my iPhone, I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, good to go. Absolutely. Now, I do have that ultimate question for you because there's a lot of talk right now. You know, you do a lot of research, just as I do, about the differences between the solopreneurs and the workingpreneurs and the, um, the employeepreneurs who are basically not, you know, as limited, and I don't say that facetiously, but working preneurs are pretty much just handling multiple jobs. They're not necessarily in a specific profession or career, and they're also entrepreneurs. Employeepreneurs could be professionals or um, full-time invested in their jobs, but they don't intend on leaving um, their jobs as they work on their entrepreneur endeavors. And then, you know, I work on, I work with careerpreneurs who I've defined as professionals, those people who have invested in their education, um, specific uh, skill sets, vocational skills training, you know, their social workers, their doctors, their lawyers, their marketing professionals, communication strategists, you know, whatever that specific niche profession is that they've invested educational um, and time investment dollars in, and they're entrepreneurs, and the two may not necessarily go together. They could be a attorney who has a fashion boutique or a marketing specialist who also owns a rental car station. Like it could be something totally different or connected directly, but there are so many levels to quote-unquote entrepreneurship, and there's this big debate in this economy of do you leave? Is it smart to leave your nine to five, whether it's a specific invested profession or if it's a really good stable job in order to do your entrepreneurial endeavor. You know, do you think you could have stayed and, and, and done both for, you know, three to five years or was that totally out of the question for where you were at the time? For where I was at the time, it was totally out of the question, mainly because I was just, you know, I, I guess to kind of shed a little bit more light of where I was at that point. Um, 2007 to 2009 were pretty difficult years for me personally. Um, I had struggled with a lot of depression and anxiety. You know, it, it really took a toll on my health. I wasn't sleeping properly. I, I was getting um, all types of just health issues that were going on. You know, when you add in, you know, severe depression and, you know, even to the point of, you know, having suicidal thoughts and, and, you know, really being in a very, very low place in my life and feeling, you know, every single day was a struggle to, you know, not just to get out of bed, but it was a struggle to wake up. It was a struggle to get out of bed. It was a struggle to brush my teeth. It was a struggle to get on the train and, and head into the, you know, into Manhattan for work. It was a struggle to, you know, push the button of the elevator, walk up, you know, go up to the you know, whatever floor I was on at the time, you know, to sit in the office. It was, it was, everything was just a struggle for me. And, um, you know, just felt like life was really just 
kicking my butt. And, you know, through that period, you know, it was tough. It was difficult. It was scary. It was very uncertain because I just never knew um, what the day would hold. I never knew what my emotions were going to, you know, direct me to do. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, some days I woke up thinking today might be my last day on this earth, you know, depending on how tough it gets and what I decide to do. Um, so, you know, for me, where I was in my personal life, it wasn't even that I hated my job. It wasn't even that I was unhappy in my job. It was a great position. I had great opportunities to move forward. But it was a simple fact that I wasn't happy in my personal life, and I felt the only way that I really could feel better and was really having this flexibility to really find my passion, find my purpose, and really begin to walk out from that um, because I just felt like I wasn't in my purpose and I wasn't passionate about anything at that point. So for me, it was really important that I, I got out, and I knew that, and I think a lot of people fall into this you know, situation. When you are working in a job and you have benefits and you have a steady paycheck coming in every single, you know, two weeks, every single month, whatever it is, you're comfortable. And when you're comfortable in your current situation, what happens is your dreams, your goals, your ambitions sometimes aren't as dire. Your why, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, we always talk about what is your why because your why is the thing that really pushes you and motivates you and keeps you going and keeps you moving towards that, that ultimate goal that you want to achieve. When you have things that are comfortable around you, it's really difficult to really push through to doing and walking your call and fulfilling your why. So for me, it was a situation where I had to take a leap of faith, and I had to take a, you know, literally take a leap, and it was one of those situations where either I was going to grow wings and learn how to fly or a net was going to catch me. And those are the only two options that I have, you know, when I did that. And it was so important because, once I left and made that decision to leave my job, and on December 18th, I walked out of, you know, corporate America, it was like, okay, now I have to make this work. Mm-hmm. You know, I no longer can, you know, dip my toe in the water of entrepreneurship for a little bit, and then when things don't go well, I can go back to my job and put that, you know, put entrepreneurship on the back burner. Because I started three companies while I was working corporate America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they all failed miserably because I wasn't really passionate about them or, you know, I just was interested in seeing, you know, if I could make it work and just doing a lot of different things. But everything wasn't really aligned. And, and I also knew that if it didn't work, I still had my job. Right. So it was kind of like, oh, let me just test it out. And I'm glad that those three companies failed miserably because I learned a lot from each one. And when I left in December of 2009 and started Marquis. Um, I already had, I knew what I didn't want to do, and I knew certain things that I had to incorporate into my business. So once that happened, and once I started moving forward with that, that's when things began to change uh, for me. And once I learned the process and everything, you know, then, then I was more of an educated entrepreneur. I still didn't know everything. There are still certain things that I wish I would have known, that I wish people would have told me, but, you know, I learned through the process. But... You know, it just made the success of of my business that important because, you know, if you don't work, you don't eat. You know, I had bills, I had health insurance, I had all these different things going on. So it really made me hustle, you know, not like a side hustle, but it really made me put, you know, put to pavement, pen to paper, you know, action to words, and really just start going out there and doing it and making it work. And every day I would learn something new, whether, you know, I would learn something new or something would fail miserably and I would learn from that experience. So, but it, it just made it that, and, and looking back three and a half years later, you know, looking back at that, it's like, okay, you know, I, I made the right decision. Not every day is rainbows and butterflies and not every day is money pouring in, you know, in abundance. Mm-hmm. But every day I wake up knowing that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I wake up knowing that I'm helping someone. Even if it's just one person, I know that I'm helping someone. Every day I know that I'm using my, you know, God-given expertise and abilities and talents and gifts and wisdom and knowledge and being able to use that and package that into whether it's a coaching program or a book or a blog post or a podcast or doing something like this with you. Um, 
every day I'm using that. And so it, it just, it's a great feeling to know that everything that I've been given in my life, everything that I've learned, everything that I've developed, everything that's been, you know, that's been a blessing into my life, it's not, it's not in vain. It, it's being put to big use. And, um, you know, and I, I pray every day that, you know, that God just gives me the wisdom and the discernment and the opportunities to continue to do what I'm doing and to continue to be a blessing to others and to continue to use my businesses as platforms to help others and to, to do what, what I've been called to do. So, it's, you know, it's, when you think about it in those terms, things change. Things Absolutely. Change, mm-hmm. You know, and I'm grateful for that because when I first started, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be able to travel, do whatever I want to do, wake up whenever I want to wake up, make some money, you know, do all these different things. And, you know, now as I'm getting older, you know, and I, I crack up because in February I'll be 30. <laughs> and, you know, it's like it's interesting how your life priorities begin to change and, and the growth that happens along this journey. And, you know, now it's, it's you know, it's very different. You know, my whole reason for being an entrepreneur now is all about, who I can help and being of service. And that's the most important thing to me. And, you know, just understanding that if I do what I love and I come from a, a place of service and I'm really focused, I'm being active, I'm being consistent and persistent in my daily activities, you know, cutting out the clutter, cutting out the junk, cutting out the negativity, cutting out the people and environments that aren't conducive. I mean, do what I need to do, you know, the money, the opportunities, they will all come. You know, I don't have to worry about that if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's what really changed everything for me. And so now I, I attack my days with, you know, intensity because it's like I have people I have to help. I have books that need to be written. I have, mm-hmm. you know, blog posts and, and programs to create and online programs and events and workshops. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So people say, Allison, you know, you're, you're all over the place. You're doing so much. But it's like sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough. <laughs> you know, so Absolutely. trying to find, so trying to find that balance is also uh, really critical um, in the process. And you know, for me, over the past year, or the, I would say probably 2013, I've really been looking at the quality of life and looking at the things that I want to achieve in my personal life and making sure that they're aligned professionally um, with what I'm doing. So that way, I don't get burned out on either end of the spectrum. Well, you're doing what I define as as success. Like I always say for for everyone, especially those who have been following us since January when we started Balance Beam, uh, we definitely don't define success by your bank account. Now, the reality is you truly are successful if you're able to eat off of the things that you've been doing. But eating doesn't necessarily mean owning a private jet, right? Um, Right. But you described, um, and I, I, I pledge, thankfulness to my husband receiving the word of God when he heard it, even though he may not accept that that's exactly what happened. He came up with the title of our conference, which defined exactly what you said. Um, our April 25th, 2014 conference is called PUSH, and it stands for Positive Use of Skills um, for Healing. And that's exactly what you're saying you're doing. You're using your skills, your expertise to heal people. You may not be doing it as a doctor would do it, a a medical professional. You may not be in a clinical sense, um, but you're definitely healing people. You're helping them push past themselves um, to break barriers. You know, that's one of the biggest things that I say, and I'm clearly, I am one of many barrier breakers. You are another barrier breaker, and you're showing people how to break barriers by helping them live a life of passion, power, and purpose. That is the key definition of success. When you're putting others above yourself for the form of helping them but taking care of yourself in the process in order to do that, you have definitely hit your sweet spot. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And, of course, you're, you know, surrounding yourself with aligned minds. You're making sure you're part of mastermind groups. I know you're um, part of CEO space and some of those other um, portion organizations that make sure that you can sit and kind of flush and filter different ideas and make sure that you're staying focused because it's really easy to, you know, go after something that sounds good. Like, oh, that sounds good. Let me try that. Mm, was working on that, did that, got that done. This one's doing successful. Let me tweak that. Oh, here's another one. You know, that's kind of 
that serial entrepreneur level that I try to stay away from, um, you're not a serial entrepreneur. You're multi-level because you're building up. You're going to the next level. You're doing great things. And you're not just doing them for the purpose of, of making a dollar. Uh, that is important. Money does matter. Do not get it twisted on any level. For you to be an achieved philanthropist, you need money. For you to be able to right. empower those girls, <laughs> right? Um, you need money to help them, to give them. You know, I know that just this morning alone, you have a closet full of clothes from the different, you know, sizes and the different things and, you know, seasons and changing. And you have women who are reaching out to you saying, you know, hey, I was in a domestic violence situation and my house burned down. My my boyfriend cut up my clothes, you know, all different levels and they need things from you. Well, if you didn't have money to replace those things that you're giving away, you wouldn't be able to give them away to help other people. So money does matter. I never want to pretend like it doesn't. Um, for anyone who wants to challenge, please, please, please tweet me at FigPro because I would love to break it down from you biblically what it means <laughs> to have money because it is important on all levels. Um, but you are, Allison, you're doing it. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. You are the epitome of success in every di- every direction of the words, just from the definition of push alone, which you've clearly defined. Uh, just so you know, heads up, you will be a key speaker at that conference, okay? Um, <laughs> just right. want you to know that. Put that down. Do not track to Singapore, Japan, uh, Cocoa Beach, anywhere. Don't go anywhere. April 25th through the 27th of 2014. I'm putting my calendar right now. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) So I do have a question for you because I know that This is what you do. This is, you know, you have different kind of platforms and venues, like you said, from your marketing hat, from your fitness guru, beach body hat, from your Owls and Tibbs International Speaking authorship hat, and, of course, you empower girls directly um, in another level. And then there's all kinds of joint ventures and strategic partnerships that you've done to make sure you're you're reaching those million-plus girls that you want to make sure you empower, and a few fearless men. I know you're not opposed to men. You just kind of, you know, are specifically focused, laser-focused, on girls and just really helping them um, step out of themselves and do what you need them to do for your powerful three Ps. Um, But I I wonder from your marketing coach hat or just the coach hat itself, because there's so many things tied into that, when you put that hat on, are you finding that there's kind of a theme for people, clients, um, or even prospects that you've worked with or encountered for what barriers they're facing for why they can't or they seem like they can't reach um, that power, passion, and purpose area that you're really trying to get them to? Is there something that you feel like is, is kind of thematic, like it's just an ongoing issue that people don't, I always say they don't want to push past. I think you can push past anything if you have the right supports, natural and unnatural, and, you know, can focus in. But that takes a lot of work and energy. So is there something that you see that's just coming up as a ritualistic theme that seems to be that that wall, that place, or even that road um, that's too shaky and gravelly that people keep, you know, kind of, I don't want to say complaining like it's a bad thing, but they're just voicing that this is a, a huge challenge for them and this is why they can't get to that next level. You know, I think for most people, to be honest, when it comes to their business, is they just have a lack of clarity and focus um, in what they're doing, um, especially when it comes to marketing. And it's it's not really a bad thing, but a lot of people that I talk to, you know, I'll say, okay, who is it that, you know, who's your ideal customer? Who's your ideal client? You know, and most people, you know, they don't know. And they'll say anyone. You know, they'll say anyone who or everyone or someone but, you know, I think that what's really helped me in my business, when I first started, you know, and I, anyone who's heard me speak, they've heard me say this, but, you know, my ideal client when I first started was anyone with a credit card and a poll. <laughs> so if you, had, if you were alive and had at least some credit available to work with me, we could be in business. And it really created such stress and drama in my life because I wasn't focused. I didn't have clarity in who I really wanted to work with because as an entrepreneur, we determine who we want to work with. We, we set the tone for who we allow to be our customers and our clients. And so when we're complaining about our customers and we're complaining about our clients, chances are it's because we've allowed that to happen and we weren't really focused. And we were just like, okay, well, you have money, so let's make it work. But when you really take some time to focus on who exactly it is you want to work with, who exactly you can help to your best ability. Because I can help, I believe I have, I can help a lot of people. 
But what I want to do is I want to make sure that when you work with me, I can help you to my greatest ability to where your business and your life is transformed. And there, that's not everybody. There are certain people out there that I know for a fact that I can help them in their business, you know, perfectly and really giving them the tools, the resources, and everything that they need. So I really started getting focused on those specific types of people. But even more so, again, that clarity and focus in the business, I also had to look at the grand scheme of things in terms of how I wanted my business to run and what I wanted to do. And when I first started, I was doing coaching. That was, you know, three months, six months. You know, I have one client that I, you know, who basically, you know, said, you know, I'm going to work with you till the rest, you know, till, you know, my last breath just because right. she needs that accountability and, and she always has some ideas. So we're always working on helping her to promote and market them. But what I realized is that my best talent and ability is when I can sit down with a person for about 90 minutes and get laser focused on that one specific area or challenge in their business. Because what happens is I just get so intense on giving them the, the action plan and the structure and the strategies and the ideas and to really help them push forward. Because most people that I work with are very intelligent. They understand business. They just need to know what they need to do. Mm-hmm. So the three-month coaching, the six-month coaching, that was great, but I just felt like I wasn't making the biggest impact. But when I really say, let's just focus for 90 minutes, you know, you get, you, get, you get everything from me. Everything, I will pour everything into it. And that's how I really started. And it was more instant, you know, the, the, because when you kind of break things over a small amount of time, you know, things don't move as quickly. The, the urgency, the tenacity isn't always in place. And so I, I really found a great niche of, of entrepreneurs that I like to work with now that, you know, they're on fire for their business. They love what they do. They want to make this work. They just need to know, here's my challenge. What do I need to do in the now? What do I need to do over the next six months, three months consistently to make it happen? And that's something that I'm really good at doing. So now I don't do three months and six months coaching. And also that, that limits me because I can't work with, I can only take on about five to six clients a month if I do a three-month or a six-month coaching because it takes a lot for me to process and weekly check-ins and doing that. And it it left me at a place where I wasn't at my A game because I was constantly drained and not really able to replenish and, and, you know, research and learn and read and, you know, attend conferences and webinars and workshops to really, you know, sharpen my craft. So now it's like, you know, and at the same token, I knew that, you know, the quality of life I had wasn't, you know, where I needed to be. So now... You know, I just do 90 minutes, you know, laser-focused marketing breakthrough strategy sessions with people. And people actually love that better because they kind of get in, they get out, they get done, they have a customized plan, and they can go forth and conquer. And if they need another session in a couple of months, they know where they can find me. So, you know, again, that's, I think, in business, and I use myself as an example to really show that when you first start out in your business, the business model that you've created, the, the people that you wanted to connect with or work with, it may not be the best situation for you given on your skills, your desires, your ambitions, your, your strengths, your weaknesses, um, you know, your, your abilities. It may have to change. And so taking a look at that and getting really focused and really crystal clear and having clarity in the people and the way you want your business to run and how you can maximize your earning potential through the right niche and creating the proper message for people to attract the right uh, customers and clients and then utilizing the right strategies, it makes it such a more simple and bearable process when it comes to marketing and business. That makes a lot of sense. And you actually, um, just so you know, I may be borrowing that because that sounds like a great compliment to we have a careerpreneur survival suite, which is six weeks. It's very mindset focused for careerpreneurs who are really struggling with that kind of inner complex of dealing with their professional endeavors that they've already focused on, they've paid for, they've invested in, and now they have these entrepreneurial um, goals. Some of them have been working, like you said, you started three companies while you were working, while you were in your profession, you know, connected to what you had went to school for, even if it was a subset of that. Um, And there's a lot of internal conflict. Do I have time? Do I have investment? Do I have energy? Um, yes, I do. Yeah, I want it, but I have this comfort zone over here because this is my nine to five. If I take a day off, I get paid for it. 
as a PPL day. Um, if I mm-hmm. call in sick, I still get paid. If I need to go to the doctor, I have insurance to cover it. Um, there's a, a definite comfort zone. And not that I'm encouraging people to just walk out the door. We don't want you to lose your house or your apartment or your no, car. No, no, yeah. No. You, know, you need. There has to be some strategy. And for some people, they may not need to do that for another couple of years because they're still at that mindset stage of having to understand their power. And until you understand the power you have, you can't really walk in that authority yet. Um, So they kind of deal with me before they can come to you and and get ready to to move forward in that. Um, But I love that idea. You know, we have this six weeks. It's very condensed. It's very invested and serious. But I like for people who are um, above that six weeks but not ready for that next level of the permission to release your success, you know, that full power pack six-month program um, that we do, which is, is more virtual than anything, that 90-minute strategy session, for us, we call them barrier breaker sessions. I really like that. So for all Balance Beamers, understand that I did steal that idea. I stole it from Allison Tibbs right here, right under her nose, and I said it out loud because um, <laughs> I admire it. I really, I think that's an ex- excellent idea because you rationalize it to make it make sense. For people who are busy bees, people who really don't have an idea of everything they want yet, but they know they need help with the next steps. And that's what you're doing. You're giving them the next steps. Um, And that kind of brings me to that other point. Like, I know you have this awesome new um, package, that 21-day Facebook challenge, um, and you're really trying to help people illustrate or you're trying to illustrate to them the power of social media um, like platforms such as Facebook and building your business as long as you know how to engage um, with your market and convert them over to prospects that will eventually buy their products and become a part of their tribe. But that is a question. And I want to know more about that um, new challenge that you're, that you're starting. But also in lieu of, we were talking before um, our interview started about Instagram. You know, I had mm-hmm. no idea the power of Instagram in business. I was kind of like, let me start an account so I can take some pictures with my new Samsung phone and, you know, put them on Instagram. But I wasn't even thinking about that in terms of, uh, you know, a business conversion tool that you could use if you know how to do it and effectively. And it, it almost gave me a feeling of, of, of being overwhelmed when I heard you say it. Um, I um, initially had an internal reaction of, oh, shoot another thing that I have to learn <laughs> um, in my business. And that's a balance issue. You know, we I have a great um, so, social media manager. Um, we have a senior project manager who manages that manager. We have a, a great system for delegation and all those good things. Um, and, of course, I engage personally as well on all of those platforms, which is six as it stands, but Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and Pinterest, and I'm missing something right now off the top of my head, but I know it's um, six of them. And now to add in another one, it's like, whoa, Allison, no, say it ain't so. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it is. You know, it's, for me, social media, I love it because it really allows me to connect with people and, and really build relationships and, you know, get to know people and, um, you know, that, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I love social media. I'm, you know, I'm obsessed with it. I am on it. I mean, every single platform I'm on. But what I will say that for most people when it comes to social media, the key is really to figure out the best platform for your business. Mm-hmm. Really thinking about who can I connect with? Who are the people that, um, you know, like are my ideal clients on Instagram? If they're not on Instagram, then you can use it personally, but don't, you don't have to use it for business. You know, so many people will, you know, get on all these platforms, but they're not connecting, they're not engaging, they're not getting opportunities to turn these followers, fans, subscribers into customers or clients or at least prospects where you can start having dialogue with them. And so, you know, that, I think that's one of the biggest issues is that, you know, you see these companies having great success with social media, but the companies that are having great success with social media, they have a strategy. They've, they've figured out what works best for them, and they stick with it. And, you know, especially small businesses, solopreneurs, service-based business owners, you don't need to be everywhere. Again, having that clarity and focus is so important. You don't have to be everywhere. You know, for, you know we were just talking, you know, and Kita, you do very well with Twitter. When I first started, Twitter was like my go-to. 
But as things changed for me and my business and as I got more and more focused on my ideal clients and customers and who I wanted to reach out to, Twitter no longer really worked for me, you know. Um, and Instagram and Facebook, um, you know, Instagram and Facebook have been the two platforms that have really become money makers for me. Um, you know, I, last week I met a woman in Oklahoma on Instagram who, you know, ended up, uh, you know, becoming a customer of mine. Um, you know, and we connected on Facebook and we continued to build those relationships. And then, you know, now she's a customer and now she's, you know, I'm working with her now uh, for the month of July. Um, you know, same thing with Facebook. You know, it's the same way people, I get people all the time that message me for information, for ideas, for, you know, different things. But I can set up a, a consultation or I can set up a coaching call or something with them to, you know, help them in their business. So, you know, that's been really great for me. Those are my two things. Now, when it comes to my blog, Pinterest is where I get a lot of my subscribers on my blog and a lot of uh, people who, a lot of traffic is Pinterest. And because of that, I have people who come to my blog from all over the world because I'm, you know, attaching the right photos to the topic or subject matter of my blog and posting it out there on Pinterest. And I have people who follow me because on Pinterest now because they like, it being on, I'm consistent in what I'm putting out there. That's another thing to think about on social media is you have to be very consistent. Um, to be honest, as it stands right now, and I know that things will change in the future, but as of right now, I run majority of my businesses, and businesses plural, um, a lot of the social media activity straight through my personal Facebook profile. Okay. And I, ha- I have Facebook fan pages for my businesses, but what, what I think something that I do very well and, I, and, and you know, people have told me is just I'm very authentic. I'm very um, open and transparent on those platforms. So it allows, and I love to connect with people. So, you know, if people add me as friends on Facebook, now the people that are doing it are those that see me speaking or they watch my videos on YouTube or they check me out because I'm so easy to find on social media. And... You know, I'm constantly putting out content that, you know, I, I'm doing it because I want, I want to help, again, I want to help people. So I'm, I'm posting, you know, want a big thing. I'm really big into health and fitness because as a entrepreneur, the health of my body is directly linked to the success of my business. If I'm unhealthy and sick and bedridden and can't get out of bed and do all these things, then my business suffers. So being healthy is so important. So I talk about that a lot on Facebook a lot on Instagram. And so I get people all the time looking for ideas, looking for help. But I also talk about my travels and my adventures as an entrepreneur. And I talk about motivational things. I also talk about my faith, you know, on these platforms. And I connect with people every day. You know, people that are perfect strangers, people that I haven't spoken to in years, I talk to every single day because something that I posted is, can help them or they're looking for something, or they're looking for help. So, you know, I do have my Facebook fan pages, and I really just created those because I'm getting close to the 5,000 mark, and so mm-hmm. I have to be able to, you know, because you only can have like 5,000 friends on Facebook. So I'm getting to that point where I'll need to do something with the overflow so I can still connect. And so when that happens, I'll probably just merge my page and my, my profile, so that way I can continue just to, you know, push out content, you know, in that, in that manner. But, you know, again, it's about being transparent. So a lot of people on social media, they get on all these pro platforms. They haven't really thought of, of a strategy. They haven't really figured out where their ideal customers and clients really are. Mm-hmm. And they're not being consistent in their, their content. So they're posting whatever instead of being very focused and strategic. And they're not, used, and they're not engaging with people. Social media is about engaging. So, um, you know, that's the thing that a lot of people miss. Many business owners are so gung-ho about posting, 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 but never take the chance to respond to messages, respond to comments, you know, engage on other pages and other groups, and you miss the mark. So, I mean, social media is fantastic, and that's actually why I created the the 21-day Facebook challenge because, again, people, they don't know what to post. They don't know how to do certain things. They're not aware of certain um, benefits on Facebook. And so I wanted to do a, a 21 day challenge where every single day you're going to get an email from me that includes a tip and a task. You know, sometimes it'll be a video showing you my screen of how to change your cover photo, how to upload a photo, how to, 
um, you know, upload a video, how to, you know, create an offer, all these different things that a lot of people don't know. But, you know, the videos are about under a minute long. So it takes about, you know, in, within five minutes a day, I'm giving you one thing to do every single day on Facebook for 21 days. And it takes 21 days to form a habit. So after that's over, you should – and then once the challenge is over, I give you a checklist of everything that we've covered. And then it's up to you to make sure that you're following that system. Every 21 days, it goes to the, the challenge again. So when you stay active on, on Facebook and, and uh, you know, I've already gotten – I just launched it on Tuesday. I've gotten a couple of people who've already emailed me back saying this is fantastic. You know, thank you so much. This is so helpful. Now I know what to do. So, you know, again, again, for me, it's people just need to know what to do. They know they need to be on social media. They know they need to be marketing their business. They know they need to be healthy. But they just, you know, okay, what is it that I need to do? Like right now, in this moment, what do I need to do? And that's kind of where I'm starting to fall into just giving the content information. So, um, you know, so next I'll probably do a Twitter and an Instagram, Pinterest, different challenges for people. Um, just as more of the platforms come in. I'm still trying to learn Vine right now, which is a new video platform, but now that Instagram has kind of done the same thing, I, I don't know. I may kick Vine to the curve and just stick with Instagram. So it's <laughs> always, always something new coming up in the, you know, in the pipeline of social media. So. That's why you're a guru, though, because you care enough to stay on top of it. Um, and, you know, I'll be completely transparent and raw. You you know you've been convincing me for well over a year now to get my life um, <laughs> with <laughs> social media <laughs> um, because I was so, you know, as a my foundation is a clinician, so everything for me is body language and tonage and voice and, and thought transitions and all those things. And I can just read so much from someone um, by hearing their voice and or seeing their person. Um, just uh, just um, tuning into the way that they wrote something, if they wrote something in depth, like maybe in an email. But social media, with some of the platforms having different limitations and characters, um, people knowing that other people are watching, so sometimes they're not as raw, like on the, the longer character forms like Google Plus and Facebook, where you can do, I don't know, 60,000 characters as opposed to Twitter's 140 and so on. I was like dead set against it. And you and I had so many conversations on, Nikita, get your life. Get it together. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of people for you to connect with. You don't have to run around the world ragged using gas, time, energy, just going to these different different places to connect with people. Um, not the thing, and you thing, and you should always have some face time, but to really understand that there's power in social media. Um, and you know, Allison, that I struggled with that for a really long time. I would. Um, I fit, fit right into the character uh, characteristics of the person you described that was not inconsistent in topic but inconsistent in timing. I might post something on Facebook once every three weeks. Um, and if I did, it, it was relatable. It was talking about family and balance and boundaries and boldness and all those things that are really um, purposeful to me and my walk as um, an entrepreneur who was definitely doing what I was uh, told to do and the vision that God gave me. But I might might post something every two or three weeks. Of course, I would respond if people commented, but that would be it. I was very inconsistent. I may or may not uh, say anything on Twitter. In fact, that was my go-to mainly because I could get in and get out really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and until earlier this summer, our senior project manager, Chantel Freeman, is also a very dear friend of mine, a best friend, in fact, since 13 years old. Um, she has a, a nice relationship with me where she can pretty much say anything she wants out her mouth. And she was very raw and, and said to me uh, a few weeks ago on the back of something you had said, and was like, you need to relate more to your audience. People are asking questions and they want to know more, and you're answering but you're like, here's the, here's the solution, bye-bye, and not coming back for two or three weeks. You need to engage more, whether it be your personal page or not, you have to. And I argued with this woman for an hour while I was driving on the Blue Route. Um, I was like, no, I'm not hiding. I don't need to do it. It's not that essential. I don't even know if my market is there. I mean, I was a mess. Um, and she was just very, as you like to say, that term laser focus on putting me in my place and being very consistent. And you know that I'm one of those those troubled children who need to um, get disciplined several times in a row before I get it, and I finally got it. <laughs> um, and it's made a world of difference over just the last month, um, just being consistent, posting several times a day, understanding. Um, I'm in the early stages of understanding which platforms work best for me because, like you said, the one that is seeming to work the best now may not be the one that 
really is where we need to, to focus. But right now, and if I had to rank them, I would probably say it's a mix of, of Google+, Plus, Facebook, and Twitter, and then everything else kind of flows down in, in terms of ranking and what we've seen so far. But I've only been consistent for about a month um, in terms of engagement and really – um, making sure I log on and I check and I'm tuning in and not just, you know, posting a great affirmation, a reflective thought, a challenging statement and be out into the next time. So that's a really excellent point um, on every level. So I do have to, to ask you where can people find out how to register for a 21-day challenge, the marketing breakthrough sessions, or just to learn more about you. I have your personal email. We don't want to give them that. So where do they go? <laughs> Um, you know, to be honest, basically just go to my website. I mean, that's where you can really find out anything you know. Um, and so www.allisontibbs.com. You know, I have to keep things simple, so it's just my name, uh, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-T-I-B-B-S. And you can find tons of information, tons of videos up media, social media, and uh, a lot of different things. You know, you can find out more about the strategy sessions. You can find out more about the 21-day challenges. Uh, you can connect with me on social media. Like I said, I'm everywhere. Just type in my name. Again, I'm super easy to find. Uh, you know, my mom's like, Allison, you know, they're too accessible, you know, on social media. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, if you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, I think that's it. I think those are the, the big ones that I'm really active on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, just look out for me and I like to engage and connect with people. So it's like, if you, you know, message me, connect with me, I, you know, I do my best to connect and message back. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely. That's awesome. Now I do have to, to wrap this up with a really powerful question, something that you and I talk about often offline and you know that I'm very honest about being open and transparent in everything I do. Um, so for people who are like yourself, they are full-on entrepreneurs, maybe they have one or more businesses or maybe just one business that has kind of multiple divisions or departments to it. They're really invested. They've been doing this for a minute. You know, we're talking almost five years plus for you at this point or even longer if you include what you were doing while you were working um, at that time as an employeepreneur. With all that's going on, how in the world are you making time for yourself your friends, your family, and love. What is going on, girl? To be honest, really what, what the focus for me is, you know, one, getting the priorities in order and really knowing what's the most important thing for me. You know, that's, that's the first thing is just saying, okay, these are the things that are really important. These are the things that, um, you know, that, that really wanted, that were really important for me. And so once I got that in place, then it was like, okay, what do I need to be doing on a daily basis to make sure that, that I'm making time for that? Um, you know, so, again, it's making some sacrifices, um, you know, in business. So, for example, as you know, at 10 o'clock, from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., it's a no-work zone for me. That's, that's strictly Allison time. I don't do anything work-related. You know, people get so frustrated because they'll see me post something on Facebook. Like, I know you're awake. But it's like I don't answer my phone before 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, because once I answer my phone or start checking emails, then I, I get sucked into that. And then it's like I look up and it's 12 o'clock and I haven't even had breakfast. I haven't worked out. I haven't showered. I haven't read the Bible. I haven't done anything. So really getting that in place and understanding what it is that you need for your have to be happy and to be connected and grounded and, and just connected with, you know, the source. Um, you know, and at the same token, you know, looking at, you know, certain things that have been stealing my time and my attention and my energy. So, you know, for example, now I don't have, you know, I, I took back my cable boxes, you know, you know, so I can't watch, you know, aimless hours of TV in, you know, in my room or anything like that. So I guess, you know, because the, the bedroom should be for relaxing, sleeping, reading, you know, just being, you know, it's like your sanctuary and, you know, I realized my TV would be on from, you know, 10 o'clock until 11 o'clock at night. And I wouldn't really be watching anything. It would just be background noise. But now I, I'm able to listen to music that's, you know, more conducive for, you know, productivity. And, you know, if I want to watch something, I can, you know, watch a movie or something like that. That's really, I, I become very 
intent of what I put into my body, you know, and, and things like that. So, you know, just making the time for yourself and just identifying where are the areas that are taking your time and attention away and, and just, you know, remove them and then replace them with things that are more aligned with your priorities. That's an excellent point. Now, do you feel like, because this is the ultimate Ultimate question, people talk about it everywhere, from ebony to essence to good housekeeping to red book, um, you name it, it's in every magazine. When you have a woman like yourself who is successful, who is doing great things, who's well-traveled already, who also travels for work currently, who's kind of basically in a nutshell a mover and a shaker, do you find that that's, it's a difficult place to be when it comes to love and finding someone who can respect you, not be intimidated, regardless of where they're at, and, and want to encourage you to do more and to do better. Oh, gosh, we don't even have enough time to get into this. Like that. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Uh, how can I say this in a very succinct and concise way? Um, you know, yes, it's hard. You know, I'll just put it out there. It is, it's very hard. I, I found it to be very difficult. I found it to be very frustrating at times. Um, you know, because I've had people telling me, you know, Allison, maybe, you know, why don't you kind of pull back and, you know, you're, you're doing too much and it's intimidating and it's this and it's that and, you know, but at the same time, it's like, okay, but this is who I am, you know, and, and I'm, I'm doing exactly what I love and, and, you know, it, but it is tough when you're traveling. It is tough when you're, you know, when your business is really important and, and I think sometimes for, for me, I'll just say from my personal experience, is I, I got to the point where I was so, so focused on building my business and growing my business that I just didn't have the capacity for a relationship um, at that time. And that was, you know, three and a half years of, of heavy, or about three years of heavy, heavy pushing and going and grinding and traveling. But again, as I told you, you know, now that I'm about to be 30, you know, a couple of months, life priorities are changing. Um, the quality of life that I want is changing. And, you know, it's causing, and again, so now I'm structuring my business to be able to slow down but still be able to maintain, sustain, and to grow my business continually. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that, that's something that I had to do for myself because one of the most important things in my life is eventually becoming a mother and a wife. And, you know, again, it's like if you want to lose weight, you have to make sacrifices. You have to do things. You have to start, you know, doing things differently in order to make that happen. So for me, you know, and to be honest, dating really wasn't that important to me over the past three years, you know, because, again, if my business wasn't cranking out and doing and do, then I didn't eat. You know, what's the point of having, you know, a relationship if, you know, if I'm living in, you know, a, you know, can't pay my bills and I can't pay my health insurance and, you know, I would be a miserable person to date anyway. Right. You know? Right. So, you know, it's, it's the same token, but now I'm at a place now where some things are just changing in me and, and more important. So now I'm, I'm not traveling as much. You know, now I'm, I'm doing more social things, you know, meeting more people, taking time to develop and build relationships with people. Because um, even my relationship with my friends and my family struggled the first three years because I just couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I've missed baby showers, I've missed weddings, I've missed birthdays, I've missed bachelorette parties, I've missed family vacations. I've missed, you know, a lot over the past three years. But, you know, it had to be done. And now I'm kind of putting my foot down and saying, these are some of my priorities, my relationship to people, um, my desire of being, you know, a mother and a wife are now starting to kind of overtake being this, like, super powerful, you know, entrepreneur, diva, you know, world domination, you know, person. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it changes. So I think that, you know, for those people out there, you know, who may be struggling in that area, if, you know, if, again, if it's important to you, you'll make time for it. And if you're in a relationship now with someone and you're, you're struggling and you're trying to find balance, you know, and you have someone that loves you and cares about you and supports you but just wishes that you have more time for them, whether it's a, a love relationship or your children, you know, at the end of the day, your relationships are one of the most important things that you, that you have um, Ever and, and and you know I neglected that for three years and and now it's kind of you know biting in the butt, um, you know but you can always change and today if you're struggling in that area you know put put the people who care about you and love you the most put put them as a priority, um, you know and for me it's you know putting myself as a priority and putting my family and my my friends and my loved ones as a priority and making more time for them, you know and and you know not. Because I would work so hard that by the time Friday came, I just wanted to go to sleep. 
you know, by the time Friday was here, it's like, oh, my gosh, yes, it's Friday. I can, you know, because now people are out and about. They don't, they're not going to call me and, and have, you know, I have no coaching and nothing on for the weekend. So I used to stay in my house all day sleeping and, you know, just kind of re- rejuvenating myself. And that's not the case. That, that's not healthy from a social aspect. Um, you know, so now I go out. I, I do things with people. When I get invited to things, it's like, you know, I have energy. You know, yeah, I'm going to go out, you know, tonight, for example, I'm going I have two friends who have, you know, different parties going on. I'm going to go out and just, you know, meet them for, you know, a couple of, you know, one for dinner and or one for appetizers and a cocktail and one for dinner. You know, so I can <laughs> go to both of their parties, you know. But the old Allison wouldn't have done that. She would have, you know, she would have said, no, I'm just too tired. I can't. I, you know, do you know how busy I am? And, you know, all these different things. It's like, no, Allison, you're not that busy. You're never too busy. It's just a matter of making the sacrifices and making the time. So, you know, I'm – you know, by me kind of saying it out loud, it's kind of funny, but, you know, that's kind of where I am. And, you know, I believe that when you shift your priorities and you shift your focus on what's really important in your life, um, that's when the opportunities and the possibilities begin to show up. That is the truth. And I am sitting here smiling so hard because I've had those conversations with friends and family. And the first thing that I thought about was it's amazing that if you don't have a lot going on, for whatever that, that reason is, a, a illness, maybe you're just – you know, inundated with the one main thing that you're doing, you don't really get a lot of complaints um, from people, whether you're available or not. But once you become really busy, especially in a visible fashion, um, like in your case, you're really visible. You know, if you Google you, you have pages of Google alerts for yourself. (laughs) Um, People can go through pages. Um, You're constantly on social media and, uh, and available and accessible that way. You're speaking all over at conferences. So the conferences themselves are posting pictures of you and that kind of thing. Um, in addition to the travel time and all the other stuff that you have to do, it comes with the obnoxious. It comes with the haters. It comes with the people who are that squeaky step underneath your hill who are trying to make noise and hoping that you will um, feel defeated and press back and fall back. And it's really interesting. When you're low, nobody cares. Um, When you're moving Mm -hmm. forward, that's when everyone wants to come out of the woodworks. And I know that that's something that you and I have talked about, you know, from my experiences, your experiences. It's really interesting um, on every single level, especially from a mental balance point of not getting sucked up in someone else's drama, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, again, we we, we didn't even have enough time to talk about that, but you know, I think that's that's really something else that I've just, you know, noticed. And, again, it's just like, you know what, I can't be concerned. You know, one of my favorite quotes, and I, I don't even know who says it, but, um, you know, successful people don't worry about what other people say about them or think about them. That's, right. that's not their concern. And the more successful you are, the more people have to say about you, your business, your life, your decisions you're making. And if you are spending all of your time focusing on that, then you're not spending on what's really important, what's really important, what needs to be done. So, mm-hmm. you know, as harsh as it may sound, or what you know, whatever. For me, it's just, I just I don't I don't care. You know, I I just I keep going. You know, as long as you know, I had a conversation with my dad. My dad, they uh, both of my parents are entrepreneurs. Uh, my dad has this, you know, a technology company that you know I've been watching grow from an idea when I was in you know high school to now. You know you know, 15 years later, seeing what it's become. It's it's phenomenal to see his progress with it. But, you know, talking to my dad, you know, when I I, I was honest about some of my life priorities and things changing and and how I was kind of shifting my business. And, you know, I expected him to kind of give me the Donald Trump answer about, you know, go for it and doesn't matter and, you know, build, build, build and build your, you know, empire. And he basically, you know, I think it's something good. You know, when, when men get older, you know, I love, I love seeing my dad now as an older man because, you know, scientifically there's like a decrease in testosterone that happens as yeah. you get older. So mm-hmm. it's cool to see my dad, you know, he's still, still the man of the house. He's still the alpha male. He's still, you know, CEO, big boss guy. But it's cool to see now the testosterone dropping a little bit makes them a little bit more uh, intuitive and a little bit softer in certain areas, especially dealing with his daughter. So, you know, he said, you know, Allison, leave the pride and all that stuff alone. You know, if tomorrow you said you want to close up shop because you met a man of your dreams and you just want to pop out a whole bunch of babies, you can do it. He says, who cares? You know, just do it because you can still find a way to make an impact and to help people without all the credentials, without all the businesses, without, you know, you can, you can, you'll figure it out because your purpose and your passion in life doesn't just go away because you switch roles or you 
move to a different location or, you know, a life circumstance happens. And that's what really just, you know, just showed me, you know, it's like it doesn't matter what people think about me. As long as I'm doing my call and, and living in my purpose and walking in passion and, you know, just, you know, powering through that, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. at all. And people can say whatever they want to say about it. But at the end of the day, if I'm waking up happy, healthy, feeling loved, full of abundance, full of opportunities and possibilities, and, and, and trying to make this every day waking up, hoping to make the world a better place than I left it the day before, then so what? <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Then you've done your due. I mean, girl, listen. Uh, you and I could talk forever, um, and that's part of our challenge is we always uh, pour into each other, and in this case, we get to open up the floor to pour out to other people, which I'm really excited, excited about. I'm laughing because I'm thinking about, um, Dean said to me before, we, we'll be cabillionaires and you'll still want to work. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. As long as God has oh, me yeah. on the earth and pours into me, I'm going to pour it out. Um, it is, it's, I'm not going to leave here full. I'm going to leave here empty, and you're doing exactly what you need to do, which means staying focused on what you're supposed to be doing and not getting caught up in kind of the extraneous stuff that's going on around you. And I applaud you for that so much. Allison, you have been phenomenal. Um, this is definitely the first episode in a really long time when I just was at an awe and I was more quiet than normal because, as usual, it takes one to know one and you are just if not more gifted than I am and it just comes in and flows out of you in a way that just leaves me kind of just sitting there and you know speaking it in like a little information information hound so I appreciate you I want everyone to go directly to her website www.allisontibbs.com um, that's A-L-L-I-S-O-N T-I-B-B-S dot com of course we'll have more of this information up on the balance beam um, YouTube site, which is at Think Pro Media. Um, you'll definitely find more information about her there. Please register for her 21 day FB challenge. Remember, there's a sequence of other challenges that will come out for various social media platforms, as well as the marketing breakthrough strategy sessions. I love that 90 minutes. Remember, I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that. Not for marketing, that's not my thing, but I'm definitely going to steal the idea of 90 minutes. I love it. Um, and also, Allison has been featured, um, and it's an ongoing. Um, little simple shameless plug that I'm going to mention for Andrea Williams has the Winning Women Wednesday series where she features um, awesome women entrepreneurs who are just doing their thing um, on a regular basis in all kinds of levels from homeopathic to marketing to professional development you name it she has someone going on um, and that's every Wednesday it's been happening since May Allison was featured in May I'll be featured July 24th for more information on that you can go directly to my Facebook page at Big Clint Professionals um, Allison Tips also has it on her Facebook page and of course you can always find information on Twitter which at the current moment is my favorite place to play um, remember to come chat with us at Big Pro and just do hashtag balance beam if you want to discuss any from any of the shows if you have questions for our industry experts we are available and we definitely want to engage with you so until next time come continue to break barriers and walk the beam allison don't go anywhere we love you to pieces everybody do your thing and let us know if you have any questions bye-bye bye-bye